that time of year, isn't it? Whereas I talked with the, the children in the children's message where, where sickness and illness is going around a bit. I, I believe I heard about a, a week or two ago that at Chelsea Middle School, there was over 150 students and teachers who weren't in class because of various illnesses. On the one hand, I, I felt bad because I, I certainly didn't want any of my kids to get it, and I know what it's like to have kids that are sick. On the other hand, the car rider line in the morning, super fast. You look around, right, and you, have, you hear of people well, that have a cold, a runny nose, a, a cough. One of those things that, you know, it's, it's winter, and you just know this is just going to be stuck with me for probably a month. Then you hear, yeah, people having the flu. Those things that are a, a little bit more serious. I, I talked to one of my friends this week. He had bronchitis, so he didn't do a whole lot of talking because he just sounded sick. Right? You, you, you see and you hear of those things, and you go, well, we have, we have medicine to control those things, right? That when you go to the doctor because you have strep throat, which seems to never go out of style, you, they're able to give you medicine that are not only able to control the symptoms, but actually begin to help your body recover from those illnesses. And usually it's those, those ones like the cold or a flu or even strep where they, you know, they really don't cause us a whole lot of concern or alarm anymore because we've, we've got ways to treat them. Then I suppose there's a, another level up from those, right? I, I read in the paper this week that there were a, a case of the mumps was diagnosed in Milwaukee. There was a, an outbreak of the German measles in Ohio. Right? You, you, you hear of people catching pneumonia and you go, well, that's a, a little more serious. If, if you're healthy, right, that it'll just take a little bit longer to recover. But those are also illnesses that if, if you've got a weak immune system or if, if you're sick with something else and then you get that on top of it, well, suddenly things are a little bit more serious, aren't they? And even as we have ways to treat them, it's still not one of those things where you go, we're going to be careful with these things, right? And then you have those illnesses that even as the, the words are, are, of what they're called are spoken, it well, it begins to put a little fear in people's hearts, right? Because they're the ones that are really hard to control. Ones where the outcome isn't quite as certain. Right? Like cancer. Alzheimer's. Right? High cholesterol. Right? You, you, you begin to hear some of those things and you go, well, those are a little bit more serious, right? They, we might have drugs or, or ways of treating them, but the outcome really isn't all that certain. And it begins to, well, now I begin wringing my hands a little bit more over those things. Because I'm not sure how things are going to turn out. And my guess is, either we've experienced that personally, or we've experienced it personally in the sense of it's happened to a, a friend or a relative Right where they've, they've been diagnosed with an illness or a sickness. And we're not quite sure how things are going to turn out. Part of that fear, I think, is, is rooted in the fact that we can't control it. Right? You, you think of, of a regular runny nose and, and, and cold and flu and, well, you know what? Take a bunch of extra vitamin C, maybe some of that that zinc, right? Then, man, a week or two you're going to be feeling like it, you, you won't even remember it. Right? You take some amoxicillin when you have strep throat, and as long as you're not related to, or, you know, allergic to penicillin, I mean, I take amoxicillin and like 12 hours later, I'm like, all right, let's get stuff done. But when you look at those more serious things, those things that, that you and I have experienced in life, and, and we begin to wring our hands, it's partly because we know the seriousness of it, and, and partly because uh, I can't control that. 
And I'm not even sure the professionals who do this for a living can control it. And I begin to fear. And, that, and there's uncertainty in my heart. And I might even ask, where's God? Where is God when things seem to be a bit out of control? Where is God when those things happen in my life, when sickness and illness enter my life or the life of a loved one, and it seems as though the outcome is uncertain? And I have fear and trepidation in my heart. And that uncertainty brings doubt. Right? It causes me to have sweaty palms and, and a knot in my stomach and, and causes me to wring my hands and, God, where are you? We hear a bit of an answer this morning in our gospel lesson, don't we? It seems as though Peter's mother-in-law was sick. We're told she had a high fever. Right? And I imagine that if it's a normal thing where you have a high fever... She probably didn't feel very good. She was in bed resting, which is where you are, right, if you have a high fever. Waiting and hoping that eventually the, the illness will, will break, the fever will go, and, and life will go on. At the same time, as Peter and the other disciples and Jesus come to, to her house, they ask Jesus to help her. And Jesus heals her, right? And the fever leaves, and she gets up to serve. And it was on a, on a Sabbath day, so that at, at 6 o'clock that evening, when, when the Sabbath was over, we're told the people in, in that town who were sick and ill, or new people who were sick and ill, began to come to Peter's mother-in-law's mother Peter's mother -in -law's house, where Jesus was, right, in hopes that Jesus would heal them too. And we're told that as Jesus was there, he would lay his hands on people, and they would be healed. And, and you look at that, and you, and you hear those, those words, and you can imagine not only perhaps the, the wringing of hands, and the fear and trepidation and uncertainty that people had in their hearts as they brought people to Jesus, but you can imagine the joy and elation as, as diseases were healed, as sicknesses were, well, in, 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 in Luke's words, rebuked, and, 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 and they left. And people went away healthy and healed. As you marvel as Jesus showing to those people a, a bit of his, his power as God's son, as he reveals to those people exactly who he is, huh? Here is the, the fulfillment of those promises of, in the Old Testament where he says the, the, the promised Savior is going to come and, and heal the blind and, and heal, or, or the blind will receive sight, that the sick will be healed, the deaf will hear, right? The lame will walk. And now as you're, you're sitting outside of that house and you see these things happening, you couldn't help but, but be convinced here is the Savior, the one that God has promised. And as you'd see those miracles occurring, perhaps your mind would also go to those promises of God that talked about what that Savior was going to ultimately come and do. Because the illnesses we experience in life, right from, from the mundane cold to the serious illness, all ultimately are effect of sin. Right? When, when God created the world and he, he made Adam and Eve, it was a, a perfect creation. There was, there was no sickness and illness. It wasn't as though Adam and Eve were ever going to have to worry about catching strep throat, having bronchitis, losing their voice. God had designed Adam and Eve to live in perfect harmony with him forever. And then sin entered the world, 
And sin didn't just affect Adam and Eve's relationship with God. But Paul points out to us in his letter to the Romans that all of God's creation was ruined. Right, so that, that now you and I, as we live with the sinful nature in a sinful world, have to deal with the effects of, well, living in a sinful world and si- living with sin in us. And at times things go awry, don't they? Illness comes. Disease and sickness ravage our body. And so God promised to send someone, not someone who would just heal the sick, cause the lame to walk, cause the the blind to see, but someone who would ultimately come and deal with the root of the problem. Someone who would come and deal with our sin-sick hearts and souls. Someone who would come once and for all to deal with sin. And there we see him on full display, don't we? Healing the sick, causing the blind to see, the lame to walk. But we know that that's not why Jesus came. Those things just pointed out to us who Jesus is, right? They pointed out to us that here, the one who's healing the sick is the one that God has sent. And the reason he came ultimately was to deal with sin. And and as he he healed the sick and he dealt with the very worst that that illness and and, and the devil and, and sin had to deal with him, it ultimately took him to a cross, didn't it? Where the devil did his best and it resulted in in death where ultimately our sin takes us and whether it's because of illness or an accident or we just reached the end of our life we all know that that's coming don't we that at some point the result of that sin is going to be a physical death on our part. And and that's where Jesus, taking all of our sin, led to a cross. And it appears as though Jesus had lost. Right? The devil had done his best, and there was Jesus, dead, in a cave. Death won. Just as it appears as though at times illness, with illness, death wins. And then we skip forward a few days, right? And we see our Savior's victory. We, we see how, how death didn't have power over God. And he raises Jesus, our Savior, from the dead. And he assures us that because death has been defeated... Because Jesus paid for our sin on the cross that now you and I stand before God perfect and and holy. He he promises us that as as God's children, one day you and I will experience a, a, a time where there won't be not only death, but no sickness or sorrow. Right? No tears that sickness and sorrow and death often bring to our lives. Because our Savior conquered sin and death, because he destroyed the the work of the devil and and all of sin's effects, he says, one day as God's child, you are going to experience what Adam and Eve did at the very beginning before the fall into sin. You are going to be able to experience a world in which you don't have to deal with sin and its effects. You won't have to deal with sickness and illness. You won't have to deal with death and sorrow, right? It'll be a place where there aren't any more tears. There's no uncertainty and doubt. There's no wringing of hands. There's no fear. 
because we have a Savior, a Savior who doesn't just have power over physical illnesses and sicknesses, but a Savior who went to the very root of the problem and took care of our sin. And with his perfect life, his death and his resurrection is able to assure you that your sin is forgiven. And that as a child of God, you have a home waiting in, in heaven where none of those things exist. And as you marvel at that, think of the comfort it brings now while you and I still have to deal with sin and its effects here on earth. That as we receive news of illness, cold or flu, to something far more serious, what do we know about our God? He has the power to heal. He showed us that during his time here on earth, huh? He has power over death. He, he showed that during his time here on earth too as he rose from the dead. We have a God who has not only the, those power over sickness and illness and death, but that same God loves each one of us deeply, doesn't he? He was willing to die for us. And so he's also willing to use that, that power out of love for us. And we know how our God heals. Sometimes God heals simply by taking sin away or taking illness and sickness away. Right? He, he uses the many different medical methods and, and, and technologies that we have available to us and he, and he uses that to, to, to drive illness and sickness away from us so that we can be like Peter's mother-in-law, right? Who's able to, to get up and begin serving our Lord. And other times, he uses what appears to be the absolute worst case scenario, death, as a way of delivering us from sickness and illness. As he takes a, a child of God to his side, where they no longer have to deal with sickness and illness and death. Right? We have a God who knows perfectly how to handle each and every situation. A God who loves and cares for us deeply. A God who has, has power to heal and, and restore. A God who has power to bring eternal life to each of us. And that's what he's promised us. So that when those times of sickness and, and illness come into our life and, and, and that fear and doubt begin to fill our hearts and we wring our hands, whether it's because of something simple like strep throat or something serious that has far graver consequences, we can have confidence in our God. A God who heals. Amen. Our Savior Lutheran Church is located on the south side of Birmingham off Highway 280. We are on Dunnett Valley Road, about three quarters of a mile east of Treetop Family Adventure and Sports Blast. Our Sunday services begin at 1015 with Sunday School and Bible Class at 9 o'clock. We welcome visitors and hope to see you soon. For more information, please visit our website at OurSaviorBirmingham.com. Click on Sermons at the top of the page for a copy of today's service folder. You can also find us online on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.